Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Step into your divine authority and reign with power. In Manifesting Kingdom Authority, Apostle Joshua Selman reveals how to unlock your spiritual dominion. Discover the keys to harnessing God's authority through scripture and revelation. Learn how to stand strong and unyielding in the face of adversity. Embrace your role as a kingdom ambassador and transform your world, empowering you to manifest the authority of God's kingdom. In bound, they are unclean spirits, bound in everlasting chain. You can't command them to be loosed. They were bound and kept for the sake of the elect. Are we learning? The thing is hard, bar. Just listen carefully. That's why it's good to learn. Hallelujah. What I'm teaching you is not theory. You have power over Satan. James chapter 4 and verse 7. James 4 and verse 7. Very soon fire will fall in this place. It says, submit yourselves therefore unto God. Please shout the remaining sentence with me. One, two, read. One more time. For the last time. So in Christ and by the authority and the power that has been given to the saints, you can resist the devil himself. And the Bible says he will flee. Meaning if you resist him and he does not flee, you are doing something wrong. Because the rule is if you resist the devil with the consciousness of that authority and power, he will flee. He will flee. He will flee. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. We have power over Satan and over unclean spirits. Matthew 10 and verse 1. Ladies and gentlemen, please read with me. Don't get tired of reading. One, two, go. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. Power to do what? To cast them out and to heal all manner of diseases. <laughs> now listen. Every spirit that does not directly influence it and the operation of men on earth is not within your jurisdiction. Listen to me. The basis of your exercising dominion is because of the interference that those unclean spirits pose to your life on earth and the program of God. Are we together? So going around to start shouting around the planets that we know in our galaxies in a bid to bind spirits is not very mature. The Bible does not teach that. The only reason why you will be learning the use, the purpose of power, the reason why we rebuke spirits is because we have learned that they are insistent on remaining within our domain and affecting our well-being and the program of God. This is the basis for which we cast them out and resist their activity. Are we together now? That means if all the spirits that plague men today decide to relocate out of earth and not trouble you nor God's program, you don't have any business casting anything again. Your business becomes wisdom to build God's program. The reason why we have to pause and deal with them is because of their insistence to interrupt your life. So when the Bible says we have power over Satan and power over unclean spirits, listen to why. The reason why we have power over those unclean spirits is because of their determination to remain and remain operative within the domain of earth. Are we together? And to frustrate the believer and the program of God. This is the reason why we deal with them. 
There are spirits, I repeat, that are bound in everlasting chains. There are other cadres of unclean spirit. You don't need to cast them. You don't need to do anything about them because God's justice is already being meted on them. They are already bound. They don't affect you. So you have no business with them. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all dominion. You've taken all the praise. You have made them yours. Praise to the King. You have made them yours. Praise to the King. So don't forget, I'm defining for you the scope of the power we have been given that you have power over satan say power over satan say say power over unclean spirits and i've defined for you that unclean spirit does not just mean any unclean spirit unclean spirits that are within the jurisdiction of earth interrupting god's program that also includes the realm of the spirit but with respect to God's program on earth because let me tell you something our living and our operation on earth bar is a deep mystery that we do not even know anything much about we only know the stories that we can glean from the Bible from archaeology are we together and that which science can show us but this earth and its operation and God himself and his program is a mystery that nobody has concise knowledge about so it is foolish to just believe I hope you know that Satan is not the only rebel no he's not the only one who has sinned against God <laughs> I hope you know the lake of fire was created by God Huh? Satan can be punished where he created. The lake of fire is part of God's justice system. That Satan and all those who are found wanting, who have not accepted Jesus, will be relocated to the lake of fire. There is nobody based on the authority of scripture, as far as our dispensation is concerned, who has been taken there now. That judgment in the lake of fire will start officially when Satan joins them. Read your Bible. It is God himself who will cast people to the lake of fire. It is the second death, the Bible calls it. Say you want to walk in power. You see that the thing is not just about, I cast out demons. It's the reason why there is no regard for the saints in the spirit. Oh, I bind you. Say, you know me. I bind you. And, and while you are doing all that, the realm of the spirit just looks at you and they can see the gap in ignorance. So next time you say in the name of Jesus, I rebuke this spirit of infirmity. The spirit can see because revelation is light in the spirit. They can see the lights that support your authority. That the reason why you are asking the spirit to leave the sick body is because that body needs to be in health to live an excelling life and to serve the purposes of God. And since that spirit has constituted a nuisance to the well-being of that individual and the advancement of God's program, your dominion mandate allows you to tell that spirit to live. Are we together now? This is koinonia. So you have power over Satan and over unclean spirits number two you have power to change negative circumstances this is another jurisdiction of the believers power power to change negative circumstances like sicknesses like diseases like afflictions matthew 8 27 please matthew chapter 8 and verse 27 But the man marveled, saying, please look up, please look up. You will write, but look up. I need you to learn this. But the man marveled, saying, read with me, what manner of man is this, that even the winds and the seas obey him? Please look up. Did Jesus cast out wind every day? He only casted out wind when it became an interruption to his journey. 
Are you seeing that now? He did not just get up and look at the wind and say, wind, I need to demonstrate that I have authority. Provided the winds and the waves did not interrupt him walking as they were created, there was no need harassing them. But the moment the wind constituted a hindrance is the reason why many believers' prayers are not answered because the basis for exercising that authority is not understood. The winds and the waves were told to be still simply because if they were not still, they would cause something to happen in that boat and they will abort that journey to the other side. Are we learning now? This is very important. Give us that scripture again. What manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea, everybody say winds, say sea, does that look like the jurisdiction of man? The winds and the sea, not just spirits alone. The winds and the sea obey him. Do you know? Now, I, 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 don't, I don't want you to feel frustrated. But if believers were walking in the zenith of our kingdom authority, I'm trusting that God will bring us there. It means that the believers within a territory can stand to tell tornadoes and tell boys terrors operations of the wind manipulated by demons that are sweeping homes you can stand as a priest that you are and speak to the wind and say i seize your partnership with the spirits of destruction the waster will not use you to destroy houses and it should obey you it's only that we know that theoretically but if we do it it will not work you know why because we have not come into the consciousness of that authority someone say I'm rising Amen. say it in the name of Jesus I'm rising Amen. ladies and gentlemen as hard as this class is learn it before that wind comes near you because to think the wind will not come near you is playing games with your destiny one day you will need to exercise authority at a higher level and it may be a life and death case for you Man was given authority over Satan and unclean spirits as touching their interruption of our well-being and God's program on earth. Number two, man was given authority to change situations, uh, to change negative circumstances. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 8. Negative circumstances. Negative circumstances. Let me list for you a few negative circumstances. Number one, he says heal the sick, sickness, cleanse the lepers, leprosy in all its variety, raise the dead, premature and timely death, cast out devils. He says freely you have received, freely give. These are a sample of the negative circumstances. That means I have the liberty to speak over someone tonight that in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, every circumstance that is antichrist, that is negative, mocking God, bringing shame and reproach to your life, now you know that we are functioning within jurisdiction. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, may that circumstance change now. Let it change now. Hallelujah. If I speak over your life and turn your health to sickness and turn prosperity to poverty, we need to look closely at that prophetic word. Are we together? Either it is God who is judging you because of rebellion, because he does so. There are rules. God still judges men. It is only that his mercy triumphs judgment. But rebellion can make a man go out of the jurisdiction of God's mercy. And what you will face afterwards is judgment. Are we learning now? Yeah. It is possible that God, a man can be under the wrath of God. These are the, the circumstances that can turn good things to become bad things. Ananias and Sapphira, they died. Not in the presence of demon spirits. In the presence of the apostles right there they lied and they fell and they died are we together now this is very important for you to note i hope you are learning authority over negative circumstances 
can I allow you to exercise the authority upon your life in one minute? That everything you know is a negative circumstance in your life. Don't be silent. Open your mouth in one minute and declare. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Satan is not doing you a favor by living. Demon spirits are not doing you a favor by living. That ugly situation is not doing you a favor by living. Go ahead and make decrees. That in the name of Jesus. Shame is negative. Reproach is negative. Setbacks, negative. Command that they live in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Command that they live in the name of Jesus. Command that they live in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be seated. So I'm teaching you man's jurisdiction. I hope you are learning that number one, you have power and authority over Satan and unclean spirits as with respect to their interrupting your well-being and the program of God on earth. Number two, you have power to change negative unfavorable circumstances. Number three, you have power to minister life. You have power to minister life. 1 Corinthians 15.45. Please write it down. 1 Corinthians 15.45. The Bible says, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening or life-giving spirit. In Christ, we are life-giving spirits. Someone say, I'm a life-giving spirit. I'm not just a spirit that is alive. There is a big difference between a spirit that is alive and the spirit Adam was alive, but he could not give life to any man. Now we have the power. That is the reason why you can heal the sick. It's part of the ministry of life, not just to cast out demons. You can literally heal the sick and correct something that is dying in someone by the power of the Holy Ghost. Ah, we used to sing a song. I, I don't know what's that song. My hands are blessed. You still remember? With the blessings of the Lord. My hands are blessed. My hands are blessed. With the blessings of the Lord. Hold on, 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 hold on. Anyone you touch. How many people did you touch from morning till now and you still left them crying? Listen, I'm teaching you something here. We sing songs that are so powerful but because they are bankrupt of revelation. Anyone you touch, look at your hands. I know when you touch food, it doesn't remain the same. Yes, but that's not what I'm talking about. Say I'm a life-giving spirit. Look at your hands and say it. I'm a life-giving spirit. It's true. As, as childish as what I'm teaching you is, it can change your life. That because someone shook you in the morning, the accident that the person should have in the afternoon does not happen again. A life-giving spirit. This is not you praying. This is you ministering life. If a flu can leave somebody to another person, and that person did not even have to believe the flu can be transferred. It means health can be transferred. If you don't believe this, then you are not a Christian. If I can transfer sickness, that coronavirus, hello, because you are standing near someone and you look at the person and maybe you sneezed, the person does not even know what transaction has happened. He just pats you and goes back home and certain symptoms so signs can follow men. That is the same way someone comes to your house. Maybe that person has been appointed unto death, but he sat on your chair. This is not idol worship, it's consciousness. I'm a life-giving spirit that the life of God drips like rain all over me. It's true. Shaba Kapora Kosiata. Life. The opening of my mouth is not only information, life. That if I stretch my hands, it is life I'm ministering to you. 
life not just over sickness someone say life say it say life lay your hands on yourself say life listen carry this revelation you own a restaurant my hands are making that rise i'm not just giving people food i don't lord the those that have diabetes those that have cancer as they come to this restaurant i am a life-giving spirit i minister life someone shout it say life listen now i'm not saying you should practice it i know it has been abused in the body of christ but that is why you can hear someone who say a man of God sat here and I came and sat there or I came to the altar. It's not anything superstitious. It's that those who carry this consciousness, the realm of the spirit respects their consciousness. Listen, I tell you the truth and I lie not. I've had people who sat in places where I sat down for meetings. Many people sat there, but someone like the woman with the issue of blood who said, Lord, I recognize that part of the authority you gave man is the power to share life, to literally, like you can. Listen, science have taught you. Can you not share a research card? Talk to me. I can have 1,000 Naira recharge card and I can see you in need out of compassion. I can share 500 and without our phones touching themselves, you will receive it. That means I can minister life to someone in Lagos. I can minister life to someone on the internet watching now. I speak life to you. Life in the name of Jesus. Listen. Do you know what life is? Life does not just mean breathing in and out. Life means whatever makes for dignity is called life. Whatever makes for sustenance is called life. Whatever makes for ease is called life. So when I call you a life-giving spirit, I don't just mean you are a healing spirit. I mean your presence makes for continuity. There are some of you who will receive jobs, not because you need the job, but that company is dying and God needs a life-giving spirit to be introduced in that office. Because one month without a life-giving spirit, that corporation will go down and God will send you there someone say life I'm teaching you power and authority listen next week is miracle service this is what gives us the audacity that's why we pray for people you see that it's not always about binding and casting the major part of your authority is to give life 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 can translate as financial prosperity. Yes, sir. So anytime someone comes to you and says, I don't know why my life is going down. Aha. Uh -huh. What is invariably saying is life is leaving me. Whether economically, whether physically. When you, you see, let me tell you this. This ministry of life is not as easy as I'm telling you. It takes a high level revelation to walk in the experience of it. But when you press and contend and touch that realm, you become a blessing to the world indeed. Life. <laughs> ah, life. That you can call somebody out and say, what is wrong with you? And the person says, I was diagnosed of a situation. And you tell him, do you believe in Jesus? I was sent to represent his government. Hold my hands. And that contact life something flows from you You can please hold hands with someone by your left and right in one minute just pray in tongues in one minute
let the life of God within you find expression to someone you are receiving both horizontally and vertically let the life of God that build up through your prayer altar let it flow to someone pray in the spirit in one minute let it flow 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 Go ahead and pray. Shaka barakata pakato so bregade balada. Anointed to give life. Anointed to administer life. Someone pray. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Life giving spirit. 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 Listen. Please listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. One of the greatest ways to be a life-giving spirit is to be a giver. Giving means something that was with you a partaker of every grace you carry leaves you to another person whether as finances or resources in any way and any manner when you are a giver it's a major way i'm not talking of money so if i give someone 10 naira you will use the notes but there was a grace on it that is really what i gave you not the money the grace that brought ease, the grace that brought favor is what you came in contact with. If you don't know, you can use the hundred naira and just buy something. And it's the person who collected it at the shop that will carry the grace. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Listen, let me tell you something. When it comes to this subject of power bar, believe me, I know something about it. I'm not teaching you nonsense. This is not theory. By the privilege of God's grace and by his mercy, I have lived in this reality for many, many years. Power over Satan. Power over unclean spirits as they attempt to interrupt your well-being and God's program. Number two, power to change, manipulate negative circumstances in your life and the life of others. But in all your manifesting power, know that a major part of that assignment is to be a life giving spirit say that after me life giving spirit one more time life giving spirit a preacher is a life giving spirit a medical practitioner who is a kingdom person is not just a healer like a ritualist or a traditional person a life giving spirit look at your hands again let it flow, let it flow. Hey! Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Oh, let it flow right here. One more right time now. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow.
please be seated. Are you understanding my teaching so far? Hallelujah. Listen to me. Please look up. Every time you try to manifest authority and power beyond these jurisdictions, it will not work. It will not work. If ever the power of God flows through your life, it is at the assignment of driving away unclean spirits or Satan. It is at the assignment of turning negative antichrist situations in your life and the lives of people or it is at the assignment of ministering life. This is the threefold jurisdiction of genuine kingdom power. Now there are many many people who crave for impartation. Sadly and respectfully there are many who keep laying hands on others but never tell them the jurisdiction of it. So we use power anyhow and we attract casualties from the realm of the spirit because we are bankrupt of understanding. Before you ever administer the power of God, ask yourself, that situation, does it, is it within this threefold jurisdiction of operation? Is it casting Satan or any unclean spirit? If yes, then exercise it with authority. Is it changing negative situations? And how do you know the situations are negative? With respect to what the word of God says should be. There must be a reference. Because what you call negative has to be negative indeed. And the only way to verify that it is negative indeed is to verify what God has said. Once it is inconsistent with the character of God as revealed in scripture, once it is inconsistent with God's blueprint for you, it becomes an enemy deserving of your administering power. And then once you see that life is depleting from a person, a situation, and a system, when you carry patients to the hospital and find out that they are almost dying or something, they, they have a way of immediately trying to resuscitate them. The attempt is first to get life in place. Then any other treatment can come. You are a life-giving spirit. When people sit down and tell you about their situations, don't sit down and say, hey, yeah, an apostle is not here. Oh. How will we get him now? It means you've been wasting the teaching you are receiving. Are we together? The job of apostle teaching you is not to make himself an idol over you. It's to empower you that the same Lord is rich unto all. Are we together? That knowledge and impartation can equip you. That you may say apostle is not here but there's something he has taught us. That the Lord works with men and he's here in our midst. Let me pray for you. That may be your first miracle. Look at the woman who came here last year on a wheelchair, depleted. But right now, look at her standing. It's called life. Hello, Madonna. Ah, Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Please sit down and write. Let's hurry up. How to manifest kingdom power and authority. I want to show you now the dynamics of manifesting it. Now that you understand the jurisdiction, I want to show you how that power is transmuted through the believer to the circumstance or the area that needs change. Are you ready? The principal channel for releasing power and manifesting authority is through words write it down the principal channel for manifesting for releasing power and manifesting authority is through words mark eleven twenty three. everybody say words verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say everybody say shall say Walk with me. Say, shall say. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, 
You will think because it's a mountain, he never said, whoever shall push this mountain shall say, be thou removed and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Ecclesiastes 8 and verse 4, words. You cannot walk in kingdom power and authority if you do not understand the power that is embedded in words. Words are conveyors. Words are like trays. They carry spiritual possibilities. Read with me. 8 and verse 4, Ecclesiastes. 1, 2, read. Where the word there is power. Stop there. One more time. Where the word of a king is, there is power. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 that we have been made unto our God kings and priests and that we shall reign on earth. We have been made unto our God kings and priests and that we shall reign upon the earth. Now the Bible says where the word of a king is. It didn't say where the word of a human being is. You have been speaking like a human being. It is the reason why nothing will happen. The day you speak like royalty, you see that now. Where the word of a king is, there is power. When kings give commands, it happens as they have said. The reason is because they are conscious of the fact that they are in dominion, walking in dominion. The primary channel for manifesting power, listen carefully, not the only channel, but the principal channel, usually all other channels are supplementary channels that just enhance your speakings, like the laying on of hands. A principle of contact and transfer. Are we together now? Usually when people lay hands, they add words to them. There are many other channels that transmute the power of God. But essentially, the power of God is released and kingdom authority is manifested through words. This is very important. That means when Satan wants to stop you from walking in authority, he focuses on your words. He makes your word bankrupt of integrity or wrong words or words that are not graced with power. You see the reason why for the believer, it says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. That should be Matthew 4, 4 or so. By every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. It means that you must be mindful of the words. Let me tell you this. Integrity with words is a track record in the spirit you must build. If you do not honor your own words, the realm of the spirit will not honor your words. Is the reason why the realm of the spirit has respect for integrity. Are we together? Creation cannot respect words that you yourself have disobeyed. You build authority among many ways by Trusting God to become a person of integrity comes from the word integer. So there are many, many people who have violated, they cannot trust their, their selves with words. Is the reason why when they speak to creation, is the reason why they speak to men, there is no response from the spirit because their words do not carry weight. One of the reasons why the word of God is powerful is because there is integrity at the back of it. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. How many of you have listened to people who you know, they have a track record of disappointing their own words. If they tell you, come and meet me tomorrow, I'm going to give you a brand new car. You just laugh and say, praise the Lord. Right there, their words die because you know they don't have integrity. If that kind of person tells you, rise up and walk, just go and look for a powerful man of God because you are wasting your time. I mean what I'm saying. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? Listen, get to a point where you place value on your words because your words are conveyors of your power. 
the Bible tells us, listen, it says even a fool when he's silent, he's regarded wise. The reason why many of us are not powerful is because we waste words. Our words have become so cheap, they have no value in the realm of the spirit. So it doesn't matter what you tell men or you tell spirits, there is no regard. My heart is indicting a good matter. Yea, I speak of excellent things. It says my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. If I open my mouth, I'm imprinting something on the destinies of men. Listen, true dominion and power. How many of you know that there are certain diplomatic people across the globe even the most careless of their words can implicate the nation if they make a mistake and say something they did not intend there are professionals who are hired to interpret what certain diplomats say because it is believed they've been so trained if america as a nation today makes a certain statement either through their secretary of state or any of the people there do you know that even have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to jesus or you want to rededicate your life to jesus christ as your lord and savior then say this short prayer lord i admit i am a sinner i need and want your forgiveness i accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. Dot in your precious name. Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.